Hi guys, in this video you're going to learn two ways of removing reverb from drum loops. One of these methods is a super simple, almost one-click approach to removing reverb from your beats using Wave Smack Attack. The other, being the more precise method of the two, uses Smack Attack across mid-side channels in a free Studio Rack preset you can download today from the link below. But before we go any further, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to stay up to date with all future tips, tricks and tutorials that will improve your mixes and improve your production skills from wavesaudio.com. Now, let me whet your appetite with a few more before and after examples of this technique in action. Let's start with the quickest and easiest way of removing reverb from drum loops, using Smack Attack as an insert. Smack Attack is an essential tool for adding extra punch and impact to percussive sounding tracks, and we're going to use it in its default mode to reduce bakes in reverb from this sample, simply by reducing the strength of the sustain control. And it's just that simple. The reverb that once soaked this beat is now mostly gone. But we can go deeper into this deverbing technique that can remove that last bit of lingering reverb with a free to download drum loop deverber studio rack preset. Now what makes this chain different from just using Smack Attack is that, in any style of drum loop, this doesn't process the kick range with any sustain shortening. This means your beats will continue to sound big and beefy in the low ends, while reverb is being suppressed around the snare and hi-hat elements. Out of the box, this Studio Rack preset will get you around 90% of the way there. But this being Studio Rack, you can easily dive deeper into the controls if you need to tailor your deverbing further. Let's unpack four essential aspects of this preset you need to know if you want to get the absolute most out of this deverbing approach. This preset is based around three multiband racks, and think of these as kick, snares, and hi hat ride cymbal elements. The two center crossover positions can easily be changed if you need to focus these racks to fit your loops better, such as getting better separation between kick and snare racks. The mid and high racks, being for snare and hi-hat elements, each have additional parallel racks with mid and side channels. Here is where you'll find instances of smack attack for reducing reverb effects in mid-sides. Now if you want to learn more about mid-side, how to use it in a mix, and how mid-side works in Studio Rack, do click that pop-out banner to learn more. Now the mid-channel in each of these racks is a combination of any sound within our stereo loops that is equal in both left and right channels. So basically all the stuff that is dead center. The side channels are all about the far edges of a stereo image, being the differences between left and right channels. 
So in the context of this technique, the side channels are where we're going to find most of our reverb sounds, though the mid channels will also have some reverb in. But this can easily be removed with a sustain control in both instances of smack attack on those mid channels. The last component in this rack is an optional gate on snare and hat racks. If you need your beats to sound even more drier, then engage these gates and adjust the threshold of both until you hear that last bit of reverb disappear. And there you have it, two different ways of removing reverb from your drum loops and percussion samples. Follow the link in the description below for more information on Smack Attack and the free Studio Rack preset I've shown you in this video. Until next time, I'm Dan from Waves, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.